Hello there and welcome to Top Channel 1 on 1. Today we're going to be looking at how to turn this 2D image into a 3D scene. So basically we're turning this 2D image of a Coca-Cola bottle into a complete 3D scene uh, like this. But before you get started, if you want to follow along, I have this post here where I show you the final render and uh, talk about the key uh, steps of making the bottle, the modifiers that I use, the shortcuts, the main shortcuts I used, the geometry nodes uh, that I used, screenshots of uh, the geometry node setup, the materials for the glass, uh, setup the material for the bottle cup uh, the material for the soda or beverage uh, you can see it's a simple setup there uh, the reference images that I use the logo and also you can download the, the blender project file uh, there for free if you want uh, so that you can follow along uh, the first step is to drag a reference image into your 3d view uh, make sure that uh, you have it aligned facing directly the front view so that matches the silhouette of our bottle then add a circle or go to edit mode and then start extruding our vertices so that you match the extruded vertices to uh to match with the silhouette of the bottle you can extrude using e and then s to scale the vertices and uh, alt s if you want to just push them along the normals and uh, ctrl r to add a, a new edge loop between uh, the vertices you already have uh, again, E is to extrude, Ctrl R is to add edge loops. If you want to select a specific ring, or maybe you want to rescale it again, you can use Alt right click on that edge and then you will have a selection of that edge. Uh, or if you just want to select a specific, uh, a whole entire row or ring of faces, you just use again Alt right click on that face in face mode. If you are in edge mode, it will select an edge loop. If you are in vertex mode, it will select a vertex loop. Uh, but uh, yeah. Now after you're done with uh, the silhouette uh, of the of the shape of this bottle, then it's time to add those ridges, ridge details uh, that we have. So one thing I one, one thing you will notice is that. Uh, a bottle like this has radio symmetry, so we can model a quarter of the bottle and then uh, let Blender, using the mirror modifier, uh, model the rest of uh, the, the the other sides of the bottle using symmetry. So now uh, we wanted to I wanted to add these these ridges, so I selected a bunch of faces and then just use I used I to insert them and. Uh, so that will just push them inside and then use alt s to push them along uh, their normal or push them outside uh, like that and then just move the vertices al around to make sure that uh, i get the shape right uh, one thing i noticed later is that uh, the these ridges were smaller way smaller than the reference image so i went back and uh, made them bigger uh, you've seen me do that I, I just left this part in just to show you uh, a few things uh, that uh, in the way I approach uh, making the ridges in the first instance. You can see I also added a subdivision surface to see how it will look with the subdivision surface and I realized that uh, adding these support loops makes them look more rigid uh, than they look in the reference image. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, one thing you will notice that I created a backup copy of my model so that in case I wanted to go back to that step, I can easily do that without having to uh, lose a lot of work. I remember Blender has uh, a limited number of uh, undo steps. I think it has 11. Uh, you can increase that, but uh, uh, yeah, the default I think is 11. So uh, you don't have as many, you can't do, you can't undo a lot of steps. So make sure you have a backup copy in case you want to go back to uh, a certain stage. Uh, whenever I'm, I have a substantial amount of work done, I always make a backup copy or save a backup copy of the entire project. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I here I realized that uh, I, the ridges were too small, so I removed them just using out, uh, using Control X uh, to X to remove uh, the selected vertices. Uh, I tried to uh, make smaller, so larger vertices by selecting two faces, but I, I realized th those would be way too big. So what I settled on was to add more subdivisions by selecting a loop and then rings and then subdividing them uh, so that I have more geometry, like as you can see. Now I'm trying to turn them back into uh, a perfect circle. Yeah, so after adding in more subdivision, I can select three uh, faces in a row and then extrude them. I think this was the best uh, size for those ridges. So I insert them first. I want to push them later all at once so that they have the same distance, so that they are pushed in the same distance. So here I'm just extruding 
I'm just inserting the different ridges and uh, making sure that uh, I, I'm just estimating the size of the ridges. Uh, this, I wish there was a better way to do the, to repeat these actions so that the faces are always are the same. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, there isn't a way to do that. So here I'm re reselecting the inserted uh, faces uh, so that I can push them at once uh, so that they have the same amount of, uh, they, they're pushed out in the same uh, distance. They, they are pushed out the same distance. So yeah, then here I'm just using Alt S to push them out and you can see now I'm, I have a good, the, the size at least here matches are the size of the ridges in the reference image and i'm using g twice uh, to slide the vertices or the edges are uh, like you're seeing there i'm selecting and then hitting g twice and uh, just sliding them so that i have i give them a smooth transition between uh, the ridges and the smooth area there uh, i go back to the edge loops here add a few edge loops to make sure that uh, my silhouette matches the reference image as you can see there and i'm turning on uh, subdivisions and turning that back on just to make sure that uh, uh, things look good with subdivisions and uh, without subdivisions as well. Now we are to the we are working on the bottom faces uh, or the bottom ridges. Make sure that they align with the top ones. Uh, you don't want to have them alternating uh, in the yeah. So again, the same technique of just selecting the faces. I, I have a blog explaining these steps better to look at that. I didn't want to make this tutorial very lengthy, so I have uh, I have a blog post on Blender Everything. Uh, links are all uh, in the description. And uh, the model is also available for free if you want to download it uh, on my website, Blender Everything. Links are in the description. Uh, again, I'm select making a selection of the inserted faces so that I can push them out like we did for the upper ones using Alt S. I like that, and that pushes them outside along the normals. When it comes to modeling, I'm just trying to clean up the mesh and uh, make it look as good as the reference image, uh, making sure that uh, it lines up with the silhouette very, very well, and uh, just making the bottom here. And yeah, so let me let the time lapse go, and then, and then later I can come back and talk about the materials. So now it's time to do the bottle cap. Uh, it's basically just a cylinder and uh, just have these vertices uh, pushed in. And to make those details in, I've just get the faces that make up those that area and uh, inserted them and then pushed them inside at a subdivision surface. And you can see I easily get uh, that detail uh, quite easily uh, with those a few steps, just inserting uh, the specific faces and uh, that will leave gaps between those faces and then uh, making the, that detail come out. Uh, yeah, so the rest is just making it look good, just uh, making sure that the vertices line up, adding support loops and uh, pushing vertices around uh, to make things uh, look uh, at least near to look as good as the reference image. And uh, now just have the bottle cap ready. Let's, I think, go to the lighting and then uh, later the materials. So for the lighting, uh, what I wanted to do is get those reflections. Uh, but first, I wanted to first have the actual beverage or the soda itself in the bottle. So I just create, duplicated the mesh of the bottle itself and uh, removed the top part and uh, made it uh, shorter. And now I'm working on the reflections. Uh, so I gave the bottle a very shiny material so that I can see the reflections we are going to have uh, because I think those reflections are what make uh, the bottle look good. I uh, just had our uh, area lights uh, in different areas uh, to get those highlights. I scale the areas, the area lights uh, to get specific reflections in the mesh and uh, just move them around uh, to get where to have the reflections where I want them. And I also wanted to have a backdrop, so I added that and I added a light uh, to have the backdrop. Added. Now I'm just doing some basic UV unwrapping and uh, just so I can add that Coca-Cola uh, texture. So I made two UV maps, uh, one for the Coca-Cola and one for the rest of the, the mesh. I ended up just using the first, the last one uh, for the Coca-Cola because uh, yeah, uh, this doesn't really need that much UV 
unwrapping. Uh, these are basic steps for creating materials. I just have a glass shader and a, then a gloss shader and uh, mix them up using a mix node and use the alpha channel of the bottle uh, to uh, have uh, to mask out the glass from uh, the glossy area or where the text is going to be. I do the same step for the bottle cup and uh, here I'm just making sure that uh, the creating the soda look out just uh, a glass shader and an absorption uh, material and it's very very simple uh, materials which I explain in more detail in the blog uh, if you go in the links you'll find that now here I'm just using a particle system to set up uh, those droplets I'm just using a distribute instances on points I'll uh, connect that that will add points on the mesh and then on those points I will add an instance on points so that I can instance the droplets which is a collection I uh, have that connected as the instance in I, I have a uh, geometry nodes at course on this channel uh, that you can check out if you don't really know what I'm doing here but the steps here are very very simple and uh, self explanatory uh, especially the blog uh, explain these steps way better than I'm going to do in this video because uh, I think these are very simple steps uh, that uh, I, I don't really have to explain step by step uh, since they are very simple and I have a screenshot of the node setup if you want to look at that I have a screenshot of the node setup for the materials uh, the nodes and uh, yeah basically everything is screenshot and uh, so that and uh, if you want the reference image as well the reference image is going to be in the on the website as well uh, so yeah and uh, that's it thank you